Let me begin and get started. Now, for those that are just coming in, I'll give you five seconds army style. If you get the first period of chapter one, which means you only got about one. I'm messing with you, guys. Amen. Yeah, man, first Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-two. Peter is coming from a, and just for those that are coming in, um, we remember uh, last week we we gave, or well, I didn't give, but uh, God gave through His Word uh, a a great uh, imagery piece of what it looks like according to the Word of God to live before God our, our Father. You know, Peter's dealing a lot with conduct. Conduct's huge, especially uh, in being a believer because it's easy to verbalize that you believe the name of Jesus. And it's easy to verbalize whatever you want to verbalize because it's your mouth. It's coming from your heart. But to have a conduct, to have a lifestyle that matches what you verbalize is where a lot of the shortcoming within the body of Christ takes place. Right? It's easy to say that I can do your job, Don, until I come up here in the body shop and you give me a task and I can't complete the task that I said I could do got to be careful with that. So Peter calls us, here you go, Max. Keep, I told you, just, you know what you're going to start. Here you go, Max. Uh, but it's just a beautiful thing that, that Peter uh, brings up about the conduct of a man. And not so much the conduct of a man, but the conduct of someone who's a saint. And remember we talked about, uh, and we even brought it up in life group, Mark, with brother, um, his name. Uh, about the girding up of our loins. And we talked about that, and it was funny we, as we watched the video. I was like, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, but the girding up and how the, when it was time to go out and based on the Middle Eastern culture, how they would have the long uh, dress uh, like attire and they would pull it up and uh, tuck it into the, into the, uh, Chip the Ingram. yeah, Chip Ingram, Brother Ingram, uh, and would tuck it into their, uh, their belt and it would cause them to be able to, to get back and forth and to move out swiftly. And Peter uses that metaphorically or, or at, like an analogy to basically describe how a man should be thinking and how a man's thought process should be. And we went over that when we went over standards of speech in the fifth and fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. So now uh, Peter's going to take us into a different uh, focus, concluding the first chapter, and then we're going to slide into uh, chapter two dealing with Jesus Christ, uh, the chief cornerstone. Verse 22, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart okay, and again he's talking about their enduring word so when we look at the word of God what are some things that the word of God does Guide. Okay. Hartley said it guides us. Convicts. Say again. Convicts. Convicts us. We don't like talking about that one, James. Us. Saves. Saves. Teaches. Teaches. Leads. Leads. Which I'll put with God. Okay. No, you're not wrong, brother. Texas. Protects us. Would you say it empowers us by using the word? Empowers us. Loves us. <clears throat> Loves us. Anybody else? Roadmap, but that's the guide. Same as guide will lead. I'll keep that under that one. Oh, you got that. You got that. Yeah, pretty good list. Pretty good list. We we good with yeah. We can stop right here. Okay. The word of God can't get away from it. It's got to be a part of your daily lifestyle. As much as you need food, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and every other thing that God has given us here in the natural realm to live. To get from point A to point B, the Word of God should be just as important, if not more important, than everything else that comes naturally. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Mm -hmm. You will never, as long as you deal with Brother Cliff, you will never get away from the beating on men's heads of the importance and the deliberate uh, significance 
that comes with the word of God. You cannot get away from it. But again, it is one of the greatest struggles, especially in cumulative in men's ministry. I tell brothers all the time, the reason why it is so difficult for you to be consistently in the word of God, because I know without a shadow of a doubt that Satan himself knows that if I can keep men out of God's word, I can keep men out of God's will. This is a living, breathing document. You want to talk like God, you've got to speak God's word. You want to begin to think like God, you've got to think, you got to know God's word. You want to move the way that God moves, you, you know it through the word. There's no, there's no other way. In fact, Paul even teaches us that faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing what? The word of God. Okay? So the word, it saves us from hell. It provides light. And I was hoping that somebody's going to say that it is a light provider. Psalm 119, 105 declares that the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It provides light when you're in the darkness. Psalm 119, 11 declares, and this is David speaking, the word of God I have hid in my heart that I might not do what? Sin against God. I can tell you personally the way that God uses the word in me to buffet and keep my flesh under control. And Peter, we're going to get into that in the chapter two, is I bring up the word of God and through the spirit, he's able to convict me. Thank you for that word tonight, Jane. He's able to convict me, to remind me, don't go down that path. You've been there before, don't do it again. Why? Because I want to walk circumspectly because I understand with this decision that I yield my members to, it has spiritual consequence. Are you with me tonight? I can keep going. Because that's what the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, rightfully dividing down to soul and spirit, even to the joints of the marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of a man's heart. Most importantly, and I want to add this one, is that the word of God discovers your condition. That's why we stay out of it. That's why I believe Satan doesn't want us in it. Because Jesus is the doctor. <laughs> you begin to diagnose your heart based on his word. You start to look at yourself in God through God's eyes and you see you jacked up. And really what I need to do is ask God to unzip my heart from heaven and begin to reach in and pull things out that don't glorify him. It's the power of God's word. And that's why Peter is, is continually... Big Mark to push us and to remind us that it endures. It, 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 it runs and it's like Forrest Gump. It doesn't stop running. It's powerful. And it does everything that you have mentioned tonight. But most importantly, look what it says in the scripture that we read. You can purify your souls through obeying what? Okay. We talked about it last week. The truth is important. So again, we're talking about it in the life group. The truth what the scripture says, Paul, is what will make you free. <laughs> We've got to be truthful with one another in the hour, brothers, that we're living in. You cannot afford to yoke yourself up with a brother who believes, worships, and serves the same God that you worship, believe, and serve with and not be truthful to the brethren. Because the world and demons and principalities that are of this world will not correct the brother. It takes another brother who's saved that can do it in love and sincerity, John to Don, to tell you, brother, you messing up. And I need brothers, I, and I'm being honest, I, I love accountability. When I first got saved in 09 under, uh, under my pastor, it was the men's group that kept me in alignment. Because there were still a lot of things even coming into the ministry and coming into salvation that I did not understand. Things that I was, I knew I was saved, I knew I was filled, that, that experience was holistic. I will never forget it until I die. But there were still some things, Brother James, that I was not willing at the moment that I received salvation, that I was sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Brother Scott, I wasn't ready to give up. But it was brothers that nipped on my heels and held me accountable and told me I was messing up. And they didn't tell me in front of everybody to make themselves known, but they told me in secret that way God would be known. I don't got to put you on blast, Brother Bowler. But I can tell you in love, we have to, and, and look at the scripture, it says the only way that you can obey the truth is through what? The Holy Spirit. 
Why? Because he is the spirit of what? Truth. <laughs> Alright? So again, Peter even reminds us the significance of the Holy Spirit. Obeying the truth only comes through the Spirit. Sincere love only through the Spirit. Loving one another fervently with a pure heart only through the Spirit. You can underline those three things. These three things are all predicated upon the power and faith of the Holy Spirit. Okay? You cannot love me the way God has called you to love me without His Spirit. Can't do it. Tell folks all the time, love ain't what it says a lot of times, but it's what it does. <laughs> Amen? Amen. That's good. Don't, don't, don't get quiet on me tonight. I know it's raining. The reason that's you know, just... Amen. The reason a lot of people have a problem with that is because they don't know the word. Amen. And they learn what, what love is from their dad or from their mom. Yeah. And they get it all confused. From the and world. So, from the world. From the world. And so when they read the word, it's hard for them to accept it because it it's so different. Yeah, it is. It says, it says here, sincere love involves selfless giving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And see, that, that's not what our kids, even in children's church, I mean, y'all got y'all, the greatest thing in the world is watch the kids. And they don't know what someone stopping and focusing just on them inside and listen to them. Yeah. They don't, and I know, you know, we don't have nobody's kids in here, but you know, what, and then you'll tell them you love them. That's the third week in a row I tell everyone I'm my love them. And they'll just look at me. Why do you love me? Mm, right. I said, right. you're my sister or you're my brother. What is that? I said, we're a family. Mm -hmm. We love each other. Yeah. And they don't, they don't, I hate to say, I mean, what you're teaching is so far from what we mm -hmm. are giving. That's it. That's it. And, you know, you make a great point. And, and, and not to really uh, harbor here and stay here for too long. Uh, but again, we have to remember, God always referred to the Word of God, but it says that love covers what? A what? A multitude of sin. It's the only thing. That's why, it's, that's why this Word is contrary to the world. Because the only blanket or the only comforter that can cover sins of the world is the love of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that can cover sincere love. And it's difficult without the Spirit to really know how to love. Amen. Because the definition of the love of Christ, go back to St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Jesus tells the apostles, look, real love and sincere love is loving and praying for those people that you know willingly and openly reject you Amen. and anything that comes from you, contrary to the Word. That's why Jesus, Jesus didn't have a problem with the people that were around Jesus had a problem because they could not understand what he was talking about. And they were some of the most educated and financially stable people that were in the earth at that moment. But because of what was coming out of his mouth, it went against the grain. It kicked, it kicked against the prick of the goat, so to speak, as, as Paul teaches. And it was, it was different. And it, ugh, I don't like it. We call makes you think you're the son of man, man. We gotta keep, we gotta get rid of him. <laughs> He's speaking some 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 stuff that's I don't know. All right. Well, we gotta get rid of him. We gotta kill him. Verse 23. Having been born again. Where do we get this term born again from? Save. Save. Baptism. Huh? Baptism. Okay, maybe. Alright. Where do we get the term born again from? Surrender. Surrendering new man. Mm -hmm. Where have you heard that term before? Nobody's ever heard of it. Praise the yeah, yeah. Praise What did he say? You must be born again. Okay. Be born again. There we go. Hmm? All right. So, so when when Jesus has an encounter, call him Naked Knight. And Brother Nicodemus, he he's a he's a member of the Sanhedrin. He goes back and he has a conversation with the Messiah, and he. Ask Jesus, what must I do to be born again? And, and, and he says, even as educated as Nicodemus was, because you study the life of Nicodemus, any member of the Sanhedrin, first of all, they were extremely educated. And they were extremely educated in Old Testament doctrine. So for him to come and, and ask Jesus, knows that this, this was a thing that went above basic knowledge and intellect. This was a heart issue that Nicodemus had. And he knew he had to connect himself with the one they called the Son of Man. 
He goes to him and he says, Jesus, what must a man do to be born again and, 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 and for me to be born again? How can I, I'm an old man. How can I go back into my mother's womb and come out again? And Jesus said, no, no, son, you, you're missing it. You're missing it. For you to see the kingdom and, and enter the kingdom, you must be born in spirit and of water. So he didn't, he could not conceptualize what it meant to be born again. And this is a term that we have, we, we use a lot in modern day Christendom, okay? And it's Bible, there's nothing wrong with it. But to understand what this teaching means, to be born again, not of corruptible seed, incorruptible through what? What, is it, what does it say? Through what? Word of God. Through the word of God. So we see again how the word endures. Because if you go back, and I want you to visit this, take a few seconds. Remember when you were all saved tonight. You cannot, okay? You go back. What drew you unto salvation? The submission of brothers. It was a word. Okay? Whether it was saying, whether it was God's word that was saying in a song, whether it was you going through a tent meeting and hearing somebody teach, if you heard it through a preacher or a pastor preach over a pulpit, it was the word. Okay? Again, this was all predicated upon the word of God. So again, to be born again. To be born again, it's important. What does Paul teach about being born again? Because remember, he, he, Paul is what? What is the apostle Paul to the Gentile? He's the apostle. He's the apostle to who? Gentile. You and us. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Remember, Romans eleven thirteen. Paul says, I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch I am the apostle to the who? Okay. I magnify mine office. So again, the Apostle Paul raised up by Jesus, and you go back, and I want you to go to go to Romans. Somebody go to Romans ten nine. Okay, it's a very common passage of scripture, but again, through Paul's teaching, you see what we being born again and coming in salvation. What does it look like? Because again, I want us to get a, a, a glimpse of this, and I want us to see this, and see what the Bible says, not what Cliff says on anybody else. What the Word of God says. Romans chapter ten verse nine. Salvation, being born again. You got a big mark? Go ahead and read it. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Okay. Yeah, first of all, it starts with a confession. All right. I am confessing. But what am I confessing? The Lord Jesus. Okay. Continue. And believe in your heart that believe. God has raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. You will be saved. You will be saved. <clears throat> so, anything to add to that? Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So why are there all these teachings out here of what it takes to be saved and to be born again? Because there's a lot out there. Well, there is other words in the Bible that says where you need to confess your sins and things such as that. I mean, I don't think that's a teaching. That's, you know. So, it I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be you know, contrary, but mm -hmm. there is other things. Yes, to believe in the Lord is your first step. The second step is to you know, confess your sins okay. and be uh, and repent. Uh, the word is repent to repent of them. Okay. But you know, this is the very this is the most simplistic form that you can get here. Not by works. Right. It's not by works. Yes, right. Step one. Just trying to I'm trying to really drive because there, there again when you, when you talk about being born again and coming into salvation, there's a lot that's out there. Go on. It baffles me. Okay. But I think, and I agree with what you're saying, but I agree. I think the real key point is that a lot of people don't, you know, they feel like they have to achieve something. In Thank the, you. In, or they, they want to make mm -hmm. it. No, it feel like, well, it, I can't accept Christ because I don't feel like I can achieve my righteousness. I don't amount up. I, or I don't amount up to that. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, yes, you're, you're right in that. There is a forgiveness of sins. I mean, that's why Christ died on the cross. Absolutely. And yes, it is for me to repent from those sins. But the key piece is, is first. I mean, God's Spirit presses upon our heart. But the key piece right. is what it says right here. It says that I've got to first just confess who Jesus is. You know, it, you know I, I mean, I don't have to say, oh, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Mm -hmm. I got to first understand who I got to acknowledge. I got to acknowledge the Lord. Who he is. I got to acknowledge the Lord. And, and by acknowledging by nudging God, and, and go, 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 go ahead, read bro. verse 10. Go ahead. It says, with the, with the heart we believe, mm -hmm. and, excuse me, um, yeah, with, with the heart we be, uh, one believes 
and is justified, and with a mouth and he confesses and is saved. Okay, but the confession is not of sins. The confession is who Jesus is. And so, I mean, so, I, I, I think that's where, where Cliff's kind of getting to. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I mean, it's, it's not that it's false teaching to say, well, you need, you need to confess your sins. No. But you got to confess who Jesus Christ First is. You've got to believe he's Lord. Right. right. Or you wouldn't even think right, you've right, got right, who right, you're right, speaking right. to. Right. right. So, I, mean, that, I think that's a lot. That, I think sometimes that's where a lot of people yeah. push so much confession and repentance, and they don't understand that, hey, that's part of the Holy Spirit. Bringing that Bringing about that. in your life, right. the, the confession here is not of sin. It's the confession of who is Christ, who is Jesus Christ, who He yeah. is, Overall. because He's the one that died on the cross, not me. <laughs> and there's nothing, and just as you said, not by works, the same I can boast about. That's right, well, like you was talking last week, a lot of even atheists will say, "Oh, there's a spring bee." Mm -hmm. The next step is to, you know, to mm -hmm. understand that that's a bring mm -hmm. so much that he sent his own son. Mm -hmm. and that's the next step. Because I know if I commit to him, my conduct will have to change. Right. I, I, I spoke with someone last week, and it was really a, a, a deep conversation. Right. He was saying, well, yeah, I really want to give my Lord, a, the, I want to believe in the Lord, but mm -hmm. I can't until I know everything about him. And then I stopped and I said, then, you don't need Shoot, faith. You're a dying saint. He says, what do you mean? I said, faith is believing even if you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I said, basically, what you're wanting to do is to become God, to know all things. Yeah. I said, you, he's God. You're his child. And that's all, and, I, and he says, I never looked at it that way. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, you're trying to figure God. You'll never figure no. God out. Mm -hmm. Just accept it. And see, back in Romans, when you really studied the time of Romans, when it's, it's when there was so much controversy as was Jesus, did, was he really the Son of God? And that's why it was so important to confess him because you're going against the Catholic the church oh, and the belief true. then. You know, that's for me. Yeah, that, that's and they were, they were killing people for saying oh, yeah, Jesus. Man. You know what I mean? That was a big step mm -hmm. then is that you admit that you crucified God. Right. And you're telling that, and that was, was huge back then. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Marty drove, drove the point home. It is the recognition of, of the who of Jesus. And we talked about this, uh, where are we at now? I think in Galatians, uh, much ago. Again, the, the who and the what of Jesus Christ. And remembering one thing, because Paul brought this up, Paul in here, not the Apostle Paul, but Paul in here brought up last week. You have to remember, and when we go into chapter 2, when Peter begins to teach on the chosen stone and the chosen people, that Peter is a Jew talking to Jewish Christians. All right. You've got to understand, as the Apostle Paul, as the Apostle that has been raised up, all right, doctrine to the church today is through his teachings. You have to remember that we are adopted. All right. We are not primary. Jesus' sole mission based on the scripture was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jewish people. You and I have been adopted. <laughs> because of the open rejection to who Jesus came for, now the gospel has been open to any man, woman, boy, girl, or child that has an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. That was a good time to say amen. amen. Because now we've been engrafted. Now we've been adopted. It wasn't for us, but now it's been open to any man that would just say yes, Lord. Okay, so born again, Peter says corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides how long? Forever. Forever. Is the only thing uh, Peter or Paul even teaches what you do for the Lord, for it is what will last. It's forever. Somebody's going to bury me, God. But God's word will forever remain. The earth and everything can pass away, but God and his word will be forever. That's good. It says here in verse 24, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass, the grass withers away, and its flower falls away, but what we've just been talking about, the word of the Lord does what? Lives forever. Lives forever. Lives forever. Okay. 
This is a direct contrast between the permanency of God's work versus his eternal word. It's eternal. It's everlasting. Comments or questions? Verses 22 through 25. Anybody? Why do you think it was so important for uh, Mr. Paul, I mean, not Paul, Peter, to establish and make sure they understand that this word, see, they didn't have the Bible then, but the words that Jesus spoke will last forever. Why, why did he, we know it now, but think of it, why was it such an, why did he put such an emphasis for them to understand? What was the mindset they were going through? I have, a, I have an answer to that. I go back to something I said a couple of weeks back. Jewish people read the Torah mm -hmm. and selective passages from the, from the Old Testament. Testament. That's right. You will not find Isaiah in there. The rabbis know it, but not the lady, not the members. Mm -hmm. Peter here is addressing the members. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. he, he's actually restating Isaiah 40, I believe. It is. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to say, hey, idiots, you haven't taken the time to really listen. You listen to the rabbi. You haven't listened to God. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to say that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. it, and it was important to him. In fact, he does it all through his writing. He does. He gets outside of your stupid Torah. Mm -hmm. By the way, they, just so you understand, they're very faithful to following the Torah. And in a year's time, they repeat everything. Mm -hmm. Next year, same thing, same thing. Mm -hmm. But they never get beyond it. And he's saying, you need to focus in on all of it that was said, not just what you consider to be scripture. Okay? <laughs> Because there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Now, they knew the name Isaiah. They knew Micah. They knew right. Malachi. They knew about them. Right. But it was never brought up. Right? And he's trying to make them bring it up. I don't know how else to say that to you. I just right? it. He's basically saying to them, hey, you guys need to do what we do. Mm -hmm. You need to have a Bible study. You have somebody lead you mm -hmm. to get beyond <laughs> Step outside the what you do every yeah, year. Right. And, there's right. just so much more to it. Yeah. And you see that even today because of it, there are still Jewish yeah. Jews uh, not to speak anything against God's people, not putting my mouth on God's people, not in a in a second. But they still, that particular group or sect of individuals, still to this day, because when we were in New York, it just <laughs> Manhattan, <laughs> Brooklyn, it's like, are you serious? Like open rejection to who even Jesus is and why he even came. I'm like, again, did something beat into their head? What? The Lord our God right. is one. That's it. You can't talk two or three. No, no. In fact, if you really try, you will say, go back to the book of Genesis. Okay. <clears throat> And the Spirit of God <coughs> in the face of the water. Isn't that two already? And then the Lord says, let us make man in an hour image. Who the hell that was he asking mm -hmm. approval from? Mm -hmm. right on. Unless it's a, more than singular God. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to hear that. Mm -hmm. All right? It's their words, not my words. Mm -hmm. All right? And you need to know I've dealt a lot with Jewish people, so mm -hmm. I know what that's all about. Mm -hmm. They can know, bro. They can be harder than a piece of granite to get through. Yeah, yeah. No. But there are also there are Jewish Christians. Yeah. Well, there are That's a lot of Hebrew and Christians. Yes, yeah. and they'll be for something yeah. else. Yeah. They're, the ones, they're the ones that really need to go minister to Jewish people. Mm -hmm. right. right. Because they, they went through a bar mitzvah. They, they, they got well, it's, it's, it's a lot better than that. <coughs> Within the Jewish community, they are not looked at. And I'm going to use a term now that you gentlemen have probably never heard. They don't look at you as going. Yeah. And the word going is Hebrew for easily led like a cow. Mm -hmm. You're their brother. Mm -hmm. They cannot mm -hmm. argue that. Mm -hmm. Of course, they follow bloodline. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. All of my daughters, in theory, are Jewish. Mm -hmm. Their mother was 100% Russian Orthodox Jew. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but they will listen to them because of that. Wow. Anyway, oh, well, it's like you walk by that. That's interesting now. Yeah. Mark, Mark, Brother Marty had some. There's some nuts, but what, when, he, and when he said, and it's true, but it, it, it applies to so much. And, it's, and, I, and I think it's something we've really got to begin to realize. 
just like what um, Paul was saying as far as um, how the rabbis would teach just certain pieces of the scripture. Mm -hmm. You go to um, a country where um, Islam is being taught, and a lot of people are not literate or choose not to, to read the Quran, and so they listen constantly to, and I can't remember what the, what the clerics are called, but they, they constantly listen to the leaders of, who teach, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so they listen. Now, but, now, you can't point a finger too far, because I'm always one of these kind of persons, if you point a finger one way, you got three pointing back at you. I've been to Haiti, and in Haiti, they, um, they, they get, there was a guy who was so frustrated because the people would all, they wouldn't read the Bible. And, 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 and first of all, to get a Bible in, in Haiti was like $12 of American money, and they only made $12 in a month. Right. So, I mean, it was like, have a Bible or not. But what happened is they would listen to the witch doctors. And they would listen to the pastors, or, or in that, you know, and, and a lot of witchcraft is, or a lot of voodooism is, is based upon um, African religion and um, or pagan religion and Catholicism. But I mean, and they would listen to the priests and stuff like that, and, and that's all they did. They just hear. Now, see, here's the key piece you go to a Mormon, and if you study, if you study the Book of Mormon and you point out truths in the Book of Mormon, they go, I never knew that. Because they, all they do is hear. If you go to a lot of them, Christians, and if all we do is sit and listen to him, or sit and listen to Jordan, we are no different than the Jews listening to a rabbi, no different than the people listening to a witch doctor, no different listening to a cleric in the Islamic way, because all we do is just listen and we never study the Word of God. So to answer your question, why is it so important to bring about these scriptures and to share it all? It's also to get us to get off our butts in a sense to actually dive into the Word. We should never, you know, we should never go to church and listen to anybody teach something or even in here and then just simply say, okay, that's true and, and never research it, never read through it. It is important, vitally important, that all of us take the time to really dig deep into God's Word because who he really is the real teacher. It's, it's not him. It's not George. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit. That's it. And that's what Jesus said. He said, my, my Spirit will teach you and all, all truth. That's it. All, all truth. truth. And if we don't depend upon the Holy Spirit and we depend upon <coughs> people to build our religion, then, our, then we, have, we have the mess that we have today in, Christ, in, in, in Christendom. You know, it's just in so many different denominations, so many different... You know, we have one spirit. How'd you get this one? You know, so, I mean, you know, yeah, right. you, you have to just. Yeah, good. You, yeah. we, we can't ever just stop and just listen to one person and never research it, never understand it, because God really wants us to uh, to see His full word, His the the Bible, and it's the, and I encourage. I mean, we're, read the Bible all the way through from the beginning. It is a huge love letter of God. How God loves us so much, and guess what? He doesn't move. Like oh, instantaneous um, McDonald's hamburgers. Mm -hmm. You know he moves in people's hearts, and, and for like Abraham, it took years and years and years before he ever got to the point where he was able to go up and climb a mountain and not knowing who he's going to sacrifice and and, is, and say you're going to sit back and your son, and he go, but this is my only son. He's getting all these promises, but it took years to get Abraham. It takes years for us to do that, but that's God working in our lives. Amen. You know, the, by the way, the cold old man, and let me just say something. And it kind of amplifies what it says. Suppose you only listen to the man that's speaking to him. You just follow Jim Jones, David Koresh, right. and I can name a whole bunch of them. <coughs> and you tell me what they, where they led those people to. Mm -hmm. right. No more to be said. Move on. I'm sorry. Sounds good. That's good. good. That's good. good. Yeah. Point. Yeah. I mean, I didn't mean to. I mean, I was always thought. I mean, when Jesus, remember, they used to think Jesus, it, Jesus was. Uh, because even Jesus said, who do you think I am? Elijah. Right. See, yeah. they always believed in the people. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to switch that at this point. Change say, mindset. Get, get, he, that's, what he, that's where I, he, I always thought he wanted them to say, quit looking at the people mm -hmm. and look at what putting the life is in the people, which mm -hmm. was the word. That was, mm -hmm. was my thought. Amen. Very good. Very good. Oh, I missed one. And now this is the word uh, which by the gospel, my Bible is set up a little different. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Okay, so again, you're going to see a lot of, of Peter, and here in chapter 2, you're going to see a lot of similarities between him, uh, even the apostle Paul, and even the apostle James. They have, they sound a lot alike. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this very first verse you're going to see here shortly. So we're in chapter 2 now. Uh, verse 1 says, Therefore laying aside, and, this is, and again this is terminology that the apostle James uses, Therefore laying aside all what? Malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, and all evil speaking. All right. Again, these are traits or these are characteristics that are mis a misrepresentation of who? Come on, God. That's evil world. How about Jesus Christ? Yeah. And they, they misrepresent Jesus. Because when you talk about malice, you can't have malice and Jesus in the same sentence. When you talk about deceit and hypocrisy and envy, you ain't talking about my Jesus. <coughs> Now, I don't know what God you're talking about, but you're talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, because again, you're talking about laying aside. James says, I believe in uh, James uh, chapter 1, verse 19, James says to lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, receiving the engrafted word of God, which is able to do what? Save your soul. <coughs> and so again, you start to see the language is very similar in the apostles, and they're talking the same because they walk with the same Savior. Yeah. His brother, you got to remember who Peter is. He had direct contact with Jesus Christ for a short time. So I'm pretty sure a lot of the things that even the scriptures <coughs> cover. And remember, even John, John's epistle, the first epistle of John, talks about how the, the word, all of the works of Jesus Christ, the word of God, it can't contain. If it was, my Bible would be a four man carry. And I'd be carrying, I'd be like, Marty, get the end of my Bible, brother. He'd be like, hey, turn it up, man. T twist. It's too much. <laughs> It can't contain. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of unwritten truths that took place with Jesus and his disciples. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. So again, I, mean, I don't think we even put that one up here. we we'll add that one. Growth. My God, if we need anything, J.B., it's for God to grow us up. To grow up. And it has nothing to do with natural age. Let's be clear. I've met some of the, I've told people there's a lot. Some of the most immature people I've ever met have been saved and are over their 50s. And I'm like, my God, don't tell people, don't touch about telling people how long you've been saved, man. <laughs> I've been saved for 30 years. You said back like you touch about it, man. You don't live like it. You don't act like it. You just say, man, I, I love Jesus. My name is it's Cliff. Amen. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful. Right? Don't, again, Peter talks about that conduct. Saying a thing and living one way is, 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 is two different things. So again, you got to understand, when you are growing, you cannot give credit to anybody but God and his word. That's what matures you. That's what grows you. And most importantly, that is what will keep you pure. The word of God. There has to be a desire for it. A desire, a desire. And let me tell you something. After a while, and more, the more you continue to seek the face of Jesus Christ, something that starts off as a difficult discipline will eventually become that desire. Because it's hard. <clears throat> if you've been working the majority of your life and you never had to get up at 3.30 in the morning and work 12 plus hours, that's a difficult thing starting out. Matter of fact, the guy that opens up the maps in the morning, I tell him, look, man, he, he asked me, he said, hey, so more, what's the hardest thing that I'm going to have to do as an opening NCO for the Charlotte Mets? <laughs> when God tell you to get up and that alarm clock go off to get up and show up, everything else going, I've already got everything else laid out. You just got to show up. So you got to do. That's the most difficult thing is getting your tail out the bed, washing yourself, putting your uniform on, shaving, looking up, and come to work, and work's going to take care of itself. That's it. Show up. So I'm challenging you tonight to, if, to make an appointment with God through prayer and through word and don't know show God. Amen. Because if you go with deliberate and tendencies of seeking him through his word, through being pure, through maturity and spiritual growth, he will be there to meet you. Jesus will never know show you, but we so often know show him. <clears throat> Show up and watch him what he does at the appointment and what your life will do through mature, uh, uh, spiritual maturity will blow your mind. 
And when God is doing it through his word, I'm telling you, to those who are saved and filled, they can see God's growth in you. Just like this brother right here. I've seen it. I see, I witnessed it. And I'm picking him out because I've seen Brother Ross's growth. I've seen from a brother who, you know, who accident, in an accident and stumbled into, into pursuit parking lot to now that is fully engaged in ministry, conversating him and I when we do through text message on the on the revelation that God is beginning to reveal to him through his word, and he ain't been saved for maybe more than a year or so. But he doesn't matter. It's not predicated on how long he's been saved or how old he is or where he came from or the color of his skin or how much money he makes. It's because he's seeking God through his word. And when you do that, I am a testimony that he will grow you like never before. And when you're not growing spiritually, it now is an indication of where you're not where you're supposed to be. Are you with me tonight? Mm -hmm. Yes. Verse 3, if indeed you have, oh man, this is good. If indeed you have tasted the Lord, or tasted that the Lord is gracious. Okay? I forget who says it in the scripture, and I should know that, Christian. But tasting the Lord and, and, and see that he's good. Who said that? Was that Isaiah? Find it, Marty. Help me out later. Right. Taste of the Lord and see that he's good. I think that is Isaiah. But again, you taste it of the Lord. You know that he is a gracious God. That, that, I mean, that really speaks to every life that, that's living in the room tonight. Hebrews 6, 5. What's that, brother? My Bible says go to Hebrews 6, 5. That might be it. I don't know. I've heard it before. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I thought it was David. Either David or Isaiah. I don't know. Marty going to help me out. Good. Keep going. But if indeed you have tasted the Lord, it is gracious. All right. Now, again, remember who Peter is talking to in his audience and remember who Peter is and where he's coming from as we go to verse four. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and is what? Precious. Okay. The cool thing about this is they can never be the chosen people except they serve a God who was chosen. Psalm 34, 8. So it was David. Amen. It is Psalm 34, 8. I, I don't, man, I put my Bible down. I don't deserve to teach. I should know that. Still bad. Amen. That was David. That's it. Thank you, Brother Bolo. Um, but again, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men. You got to remember, Jesus was rejected. And not was he only rejected, but he was rejected by the group of individuals that he came to save. It's like, man, what's going on? Okay? Jesus it just didn't pop out of thin air and just, uh, he kind of did, immaculate conception. Mm -hmm. Amen. I guess I got to be careful with that. All right? But it was intentional. Let's put it that way. There's nobody else that qualified to come down here on the earth and redeem mankind of sinful ways. But Jesus. Okay. God chose his only begotten son. Who texted me that? John 3 16. Brother, three, 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 three. Uh, yeah, brother texted me that man. What's, what's John 3 16, man? It's probably one of the most world renowned. I mean, everybody. You can go to China, you can go to Singapore, you can go anywhere in Asia, uh, even Africa, and you John 3 16, they know it. Look up. Yeah, even yeah, even <laughs> at Cook Island, <laughs> Brother Ross. Yeah. John 3 16. And it goes back to what Brother Marty was talking about earlier, the acknowledgement of who Jesus is. Okay? Even, if the, even people that don't believe on the name of Jesus know John 3.16. <laughs> even at atheists, unbelievers, they know John 3.16. And I believe that that is one of those verses that Jesus has really, I mean, it's out there and it's, and it's in people's hearts and it's in people's minds. It's just what it is. All right? But again, they're chosen. But it's because Jesus was chosen. He was chosen by his father. And he was sent into the earth to do a mission. And he did just that. He did it perfectly. And because of it now, what Paul teaches in Romans, the fifth chapter, he talks about justification and salvation. And now we can be justified. Okay? And understand that justification, as Peter's teaching, doesn't justify you to have a license to sin and live a life full of lawlessness. Let's be clear. Because you leave here tonight and go back and tell your white man, Cliff, Plus, they man, we could be vigilantes and still end up in eternity with Jesus. The devil is alive. Don't put that in my mouth. All right? 
It does not give you a license to live, think, and live what, what Paul ca calls a, a lawless. And it's not saying that. But it's saying now because you believe, now you have been justified by grace. Again, it goes back to the, the, uh, the, the third verse. You taste it of the Lord and you know that he's gracious. All right? <clears throat> Five, you also as living stones are being built up high, a spiritual house. Okay? Isn't that what Paul teaches? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what he that's what he teaches. That our bodies are the what? Temples, Temples of what? Junk, pornography, profanity, envy, malice, strife, jealousy. Somebody go to First Corinthians the sixth chapter. We're gonna find it. Stop doing this one. I'm gonna flip it. First Corinthians six. What does Paul say that our bodies are? He's, he's teaching. He's teaching us. What are our bodies? Remember the Christ. The temple of the what? The Holy Spirit. Read it, Marty. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom um, you have from God, and that you are not your own? Okay. For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God with your body. You've been bought. You have been bought. You've been purchased. Okay. It costs something. There's a price tag on you. <coughs> He's talking to Corinth heathens. Okay. And just like we teaching tonight, I don't call you a heathen. I love all of y'all. All right. <coughs> nobody in this room has a crown over their head. So again, understanding that there's a tag on us. That the house that your spirit embodies, think of it like this, isn't a house that God has loaned you for it to get to end up in foreclosure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't see a bunch of stickers on the outside of you from the state of North Carolina saying evict and get out. You got 30 days. You've been bought with a very with a price tag that no man, no woman can ever buy. Through what Jesus has done over 2,000 years ago. You can't forget that. I don't care how mundane or redundant you think it sounds. The cross still carries the power. The blood of Jesus Christ still works. It worked 2,000 years ago. And it works right now in 2018 November. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're a spiritual house. Paul said, I like Paul. He likes the letters in the corner. He said, brothers don't even realize that your body, you don't even belong to yourself. <laughs> Everything that's of you and in you is only because of God. Can't tell America that though, Don. Have mercy on us, God. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Okay. So we are to, or you think in the, I'm sorry. No, 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 I was going to ask you that once you, I wanted you to finish this. Say something. Build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Are you and I today so still supposed to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord? Amen. Yeah. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Okay. How so? What does that look like to someone who's never offered up a spiritual sacrifice to the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay. Fasting. Prayer. 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 Praise. Praise. Worship. What are some other spiritual sacrifices that should embody a believer? Offering. Offering. So things that are monetary. Surrender. Okay. Service. Okay. So still. But let's look at the latter part because this is the this is the key piece. And I think Peter puts this in here. I, I, I know the Lord unctions him, but it says not not about not only am I offering up spiritual sacrifices. But they must be what? Yes. 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 That means I have, that means there's that possibility, there's that small chance that I could potentially offer up something to Jesus that may not be acceptable. Uh oh. How do we do that? Last word. Come out of the word. How do we do that? I don't want to do that. 
I want to offer up something that's acceptable. Can do we are we able to know what's acceptable to the Lord? Yeah. Let's get there. Let's ask that question. Do you know through your sacrificial offering to Jesus what is acceptable in his sight? How? And through the checking of the Spirit of God in you. Man. What'd you say? I would say first of all, you follow the same example of what Christ did to God. I mean the way Christ um his service to God. Because he, he did it as a humble. I mean, he was God. He was the right. Son of God. And yet he never did anything outside <coughs> except for going to God first. Hmm? There you go. We all agree? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> but but the, 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 your, your answer to your question, and I'm not the answer is, is how do we how does something that we do become unacceptable? Okay, we're serving in a parking lot. You know, we're serving in student ministry. We're serving in men's ministry. We're serving um, as a security um, security. How does all that all of a sudden become unacceptable when we put ourselves first mm. in that position? Mm. You know, I mean, or when we think it's our duty or it's mm. our responsibility or it's oh, something I must do. Glory. You know, any any time that we say God's given me this gift, then we need to stop. God didn't give you a gift for you to to to, to be up above it and above Him. You know, if God's given us a gift, He's given us a gift for. As we talked about when we studied First Corinthians, for two reasons: one, to glorify God; number one, mm -hmm. two, to edify the body. Yeah. Never edify yourself. Right. Never edify anything you have to do. It's got to either edify the body. First, it's got to always glorify God. But then second, it's got to edify the body. If it's not doing those two things, it ain't, it ain't right. And what the hell of beans. It's and, not acceptable. And it's tough for men. <coughs> you ever watch, everybody ever watched the movie Coach Carter? Mm -hmm. Samuel Jackson went down there and tied his shoes. And man, look at my shoes. I can't talk like Samuel Jackson. He needs Jesus too. Uh, but, you know, he starts saying some stuff and how he tied his shoes and everything, you know, because it was all about him. And look, he, because it's easy for a man that operates. And that's why at the beginning of this chapter, Peter clearly says that before that we can endure through God's word and maintain a supernatural conduct, that there are some things that have to be laid aside. If these things are not laid aside and you're doing things that are in the name of Jesus, then they have to be for Jesus and about Jesus and can't be for Cliff and about Cliff. Am I making sense? Because it's very easy if these things are not laid aside for you to do something, even though God still allowed you to do it, it just stayed at that. You did it. Good job. All right. Paul teaches the core, and I believe in the second letter, never desire to glory for your flesh to ever glory in the presence of Jesus Christ. Ever. It all belongs to him. It maximizes and illuminates the fact of how less we are as a creation in the sight of our creator. We need God. Yeah. This is so. See, the twelve tribes. There's only one of the tribes that were supposed to be the priest, and so for him to say this, he's speaking directly to us. It's basically telling the Jews, Jew, all of us are to be priests, because that was, you know, you and I'm going. He was breaking that mindset mm -hmm. that it's not their responsibility just to teach the word, and you raise the sheep, and you build the tents, and you. Mm -hmm. It's all of our jobs. And the priests, that when you study the, the priests, what the priests did, they were to anoint and make sacrifices and spread the word of God. The atonement. The atonement. And that's, mm -hmm. that is so deep right there because a lot of us say, it's Brother Cliff's job to study. Okay, let's put it down in our language. It's his job to teach us. Really, it's, it's every one of our jobs to bless each other and our wives and our children and our neighborhoods and anywhere we go. That's right. That's what, a, I don't, but that's what, that's so deep. Mm -hmm. That gets back to what I was trying to say before. The average Jewish person has not been taught all of the Old Testament. That's the shortcoming of the rabbis <coughs> and the elders. Mm. And my own opinion is they did it because they wanted the power. Yeah, lead you to keep you ignorant. Keep you ignorant. Exactly. Yeah. 
it's slavery. Yeah. yeah. Countries, countries are still operating like that today in 2018. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just saw it on, on the news feed the other day that the Middle East and one of the cultures of the sex over there between, mm -hmm. I want to say northern Assyria, just women just began driving. Just mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. 2018, I think, in August, the pact was passed. I'm like, what? You saw me. My goodness. My, my, my. There are more than camels. <laughs> Yeah, well, one an automobile, something you actually put a key in and turn it, it'll go this way, it'll go to the way that you, you know, amen. Just goes to show you everybody, including the Middle East, needs Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Verse 6, therefore, that was also contained in the scripture. And again, we, Peter is going back to uh, an, an Old Testament quote, and it is uh, for us. To behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. Again, this is a, a, a quote that is glorifying who God is. And again, when you look at, at, at the day that when Peter is teaching, and even back uh, in, in constru a constructual, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, idea or the theme of how they built, that chief cornerstone was that first cornerstone that was laid in building the foundation of anything. When that chief cornerstone went down, no other stone could be aligned until that stone was first laid. Okay. That says a lot to you and I today. You know, especially when we start talking about here, when I asked, asked all of you, what are some of the things that the Word of God does and it guides and leads is what I heard. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the only way we can even come close, remotely close to being aligned is we put Him first. Why? Because He leads. It's not you leading God. You can't take a God who's everywhere all the time anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. It really <laughs> sounds dumb. <dope. laughs> Lord, let me take you to Barnes and Nobles and show you something. How are you going to take God anywhere? Let me read you. He knows everything. All right? It's like my granddaughter. My granddaughter can't take me across the street. I take you across the street. I'm bigger. I'm stronger. I can protect you. When a car comes, I can yank you out the way and take the blunt force for you. That's what God does. My granddaughter is three, is three years old and barely 24 inches. You can't see anything. You've got no power. You don't pay anything, and you rely on me. I hold your hand, and you move when I say move. When I say stop, you stop. It's the same should be between the creation and the creator. We're holding his hand, and thank God we're in it. It'd be very easy for him to do one of these numbers and keep moving. <clears throat> and rightfully so, because we're heathens undeserving of nothing but hell, death, and the grave. Yet we can never, going back to Peter's teaching about the conduct, walk around with the attitude thinking that God owes us something. My bad, James. I can't bend over a mold. Amen. It's okay. <laughs> but now, Jesus, Jesus also called Peter the cornerstone. <clears throat> Call him the rock. The rock. Well, he said. He said Peter. He said Peter, which means church, actually right? stone. That's right. right. Oh, and he oh, says, a, so he said, you Peter, church, church, stone, yeah. not upon this rock, I shall build my church. Right. Matthew sixteen. But uh, rock wasn't Peter. The rock was God. Right. right. So Peter that, was a stone. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> and Jesus is the rock. Mm -hmm. So but you probably have a good point because when you're reading this letter, just real quick, but when, yeah, when you're reading this letter. You gotta, you gotta drop back and think. Who's, who's writing the letter? Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, back when we was talking, back in, uh, back in here, uh, when he was talking about brotherly love and God, you know, Jesus, you know, in John it says, Jesus walked up to him and says, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter goes, No, I feel owe you. I brotherly love you, Phileo. You mm -hmm. know, Phileo. Mm -hmm. And um. You know, Jesus would say that you got me. And he goes, no. And now he, now he sits here and writes this. Right. And, and, he, and he goes back and he says, there, now he fully understands what brotherly love is mm -hmm. and what agape love is. Amen. And they go hand in hand. They do. It's good. I saw. I was watching the Bible Project this week on Peter. And it said that that Peter transcribed this to someone else that wrote that. Peter himself probably yeah. didn't write. But you got to understand a lot of. A lot of the writings, especially in the New Testament, people did not read and write per se. They had scribes to do okay, this, right? Yeah. 
So did he actually put his pen to it? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But after it was all written, he said, yes, I agree with it. He mm -hmm. blessed it. Oh, no, no, this is my word. That, those are my words. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to describe yeah, it. And Paul did the same thing, but there were a couple of them where Paul says, I wrote those okay, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Peter was a fisherman. He probably yeah. didn't have those skills. Yeah, it probably wasn't the skills. I brought that up, and that's why when we opened up Peter, I brought that point up because there are a lot of theological debates, mm -hmm. even in the instruction of the letter, simply because he was an uneducated fisherman. His PhD wasn't inscribed. It was in line and pole in water and could catch and probably, if Peter was alive today, he'd be the hit, hit cop 45 of, of fit, have his own fishing network. Right. Okay, that'd be Peter. Right. Be there you go. He'd have his own series. Not very educated, though. Yet Jesus Christ used him in a miraculous way. By the way, I want to say something about that, too. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that scribes back then mm -hmm. wrote exactly what they were told yeah. to write. They didn't deviate. Mm -hmm. right? Your artistic right. Blessings. We have some time. I'll tell you how <laughs> you get the yeah, Hebrew yeah. scroll you have today mm -hmm. and why they cost. Fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand oh, yeah. dollars for a scroll, mm -hmm. but the procedure that they used to write that—it's just absolutely hellacious. Yeah. I'll talk to you all about yeah. it. I've done some some study in in uh, the Beatty scrolls and the yeah. Prius. Yeah, have anybody seen Denzel Washington's The Book of Eli? Yeah, Remember in the very end when he's all dressed in white and he shaved his head and kind of that kind of that same concept. <clears throat> yeah, he. He did that, say, get the paper. We're going to be here for a while. Right. <laughs> he just write what I say. Okay. Amen. They weren't created for this. Amen. Amen. So again, uh, behold, I lay in Zion, the chief cornerstone. We're talking about Jesus, who believes on him, will by no means be what? Okay, again, there's an emphasis on what? F-A-I-T-H. Okay, it's faith. This is a faith thing. I keep telling you, this is a faith walk. It's faith. It's believing on him. You will never be put to shame. So even though people shame you, even though people on your job may mock you, even though people will make fun of you. And I've been made fun of, Brother Paul, for testifying in public in the name of Jesus. You may laugh at me. You may mock at me. People have called me and said, I'm outside my mind. I need to be in a mental asylum. But I'm telling you, Brother Christian, I've been more free than I've ever been in my entire life. And I can promise you, if I'm to be locked up anywhere, it's in heaven. So you might shame me here on this earth. Oh, Lord have mercy, but I'm all good. <laughs> you believe on his name and the world will mock you. But Jesus says, I got your back. Amen. Mm -hmm. By the way, they're going to come like that. Mm -hmm. With respect to that. Yes, sir. You were preaching to idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 7. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious but to those who are what? Okay. So again, when, when, when Peter opens up in verse 22 tonight, he says, since you have purified your souls. So obeying the truth is a key ingredient through soul purification. Remember, as God, and not to really go too deep into this, but as God is three part, but he's still one, you and I are also three part. Mind or body, spirit, and soul. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. So again, he talks about since you are purifying yourself, it's only through obeying the truth. So the disobedient really relinquish the ability through God, through faith, to have a soul that's purified. You go to somebody in the street right now at the gas station and witness and talk about their soul, and they go, man, I don't give a dog, oh man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make it. You're talking about soul purification, huh, brother? Because what I'm talking about is what's going to happen after this old nasty devil body that you're living in is going to pass away and go into the earth and maggots and dirt and all of it. They put you in the house, which I still think is weird, okay? You sit on somebody's shelf one day, however they do it, this is all going to be, this is all temporal, <laughs> okay? I'm talking about things that are eternal, and most people don't give a doggone about that. You don't understand the, the power that comes with disobedience. Disobedience is just as powerful as being obedient, except for they have two different consequences. They look totally different from one another. But disobedience is extremely powerful. If you've had children for more than a day, you know that in my house, disobedience is powerful. 
You can disobey me in my house if you want to. There's going to be some consequences. Okay? They have, they have extreme ramifications. I'm talking spiritual things. Amen? It says the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. They rejected Jesus Christ, but he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. It says in verse 8, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the what? Back to the word again. Okay. Again, the apostle Peter is making reference, a reference to something that is eternal. And that something is the word of God. Remember I told you, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, we said it tonight, that the word of God, I spelled that wrong, that the word of God is quick. That word quick in the Greek translated to English means it has life. Like it breathes, where we get the word pneuma, or spirit, ghost. It's breathe, it, it's breath, it, it's, 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 it's amazing. <laughs> amazing. So amazing. And he says again, they're disobedient because they won't obey the word to which they also were appointed. Okay. I think Brother Hartley brought it up, somebody brought it up tonight on this side, talking about uh, studying the word of the law for yourself. And that's scripture. First Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved, a work in the need not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Because right? I tell you, when somebody's rightly divided, there's a devil sitting somewhere in some church in some corner. Yeah, I said it, in a church, right, wrongfully dividing God's word. Okay? You have to do that for yourselves. We still, there's still a place for teaching and preaching but there's still some deliberate work that men have to do on their own. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Comments or questions before we go to verse 9? It, it's so amazing, and I love Peter's one of my favorite books. He's showing them that, see, back in the old days, they used to go to the ministers or to the priests, and they would tell them if, if what they should do or if it's God's will for them to do this. Man, we're, we're, you got to imagine the mindset they, they had He's removing this, and it tells us, like, I mean, I can go Brother Cliff, and I've talked to Brother Cliff a lot about certain things that are going on in my life today. Amen. But he is just a, a, he has a word of knowledge, but the guidance, what God's wanting us to do is to have it in here. And what Peter's trying to draw out is mm -hmm. for us to seek the Lord, not this, so I'll say, it through this prophet or to. And that's what they have been relying on. It is so. It's like you said. Mm -hmm. So many people rely and hold on every word of what the preacher says. Mm -hmm. and, and who God's wanting to speak to yeah. is me. Amen. Now, Amen. Nine. But you are a chosen generation, and I still even believe that for today. I know. I know it looks grim and it looks ugly, but. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I, you can say what you want. I, I know what the book of Acts says, that uh, when, when, when Peter is actually preaching in to, to Jewish believers and even people that have come abroad, uh, he begins to quote a minor prophet by the name of Joel. And he said that in the last days, of which you and I are living in now, that Jesus Christ will pour his spirit upon all flesh. His sons and daughters will begin to prophesy. Your daughters will begin to dream dreams, and old men will begin to have visions. How the sun and the moon will come like that of blood, and the smoke and the vapor that fills the temple. These are things that are happening right now. And as bad as it looks in the world, I'm telling you, what, what? Okay, let me keep going. But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And again, that holy nation, and Jesus, even to this day, and what we're seeing, I believe, is still calling his people to be fashioned in the way of holiness. It's important. And I, I could stay on that probably for another three weeks just in holiness. Because we, we <laughs> holiness is anything that you want to, if you want to, Don, I'm trying to be nice. Uh, but holiness is anything that you can think that's in your life that misrepresents Jesus Christ. Look at it like that. All right. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into what? His marvelous light. What I can't get, Brother Marty, is why we can't praise a God that's removed us from darkness. Why do I sit Sunday or Wednesday or Tuesday or even in my private worship 
And I, I, it's even hard for men just to raise their hand and clap and move. You're talking about a God who's delivered you from hell and you can't clap and lift your hands and open your mouth and look crazy. <laughs> Why not? Men, I say, I, yeah. <coughs> Around, you better start worshiping. Looking at a football <laughs> What you doing, man? Sitting up there, man. Taylor can play. Yeah, he can play. Okay. <laughs> this is all. This is lifestyle, y'all. You can say what you want. Because I'm telling you, through this walk, brother Christian, I've learned I don't need the drum or the guitar. All I need is a mouth and a heart that's full of praise and worship. I know what God's done for me. I don't need nobody to pump me up, to pry me, to slap me on my butt and say good game, give God praise. I don't need any of that. Because I know what it is to come out of true darkness, demonic darkness, and be brought into a light that protects and shines on me. I don't get it. Yes, brothers are testifying. They're like, I don't know, I need about three weeks to prepare. What you preparing for? Telling somebody what Jesus has done for you? You need to prepare for that? Then I know your witness and your evangelism game sucks. Preach it. <laughs> That's the brother said, man, I need about a month, man. A month for what? All right, brother, I respect it. In my mind, I was screaming like, a month for what? I was like, amen, bless the Lord. <laughs> Got to have my breath of walk out. Because it just blows my mind. I say, man, man you and everybody ain't like, it ain't about me. It, it, it's knowing that you've been brought from darkness into light. And that Jesus isn't a secret for you to hold. Like Jesus only died for you. <laughs> Not knowing that people that God has put you in, 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 in the same environment are seeking to come out of the darkness. And here you have the key to life that's eternal and you won't even tell them about it. But you'll be like, hey man, you see that new Glock 19 that came out? And you'd blast everybody on Facebook. Hey, man, you going on that hunting trip, man, half the church going. And if you could be that motivated and excited about getting the gospel out, man, more folks would be in pursuit. Preach it, brother. We had to go to nine services. We need about two more preachers. We got work to do, brothers. Amen. All right, we got. I'm sorry. Light, light. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I know this list was going to grow as we was going through the teaching. It's so good. But that darkness, brother, ain't nothing. Man, I guess you got to be in and come out of it to really appreciate it. Bless the Lord anyhow. Uh, verse 10, who once were not a people, but now are people. Oh, oh, I messed up. Oh, man. Changing my name. All right. Who have not obtained what? Mercy. But now they've obtained what? Mercy. Yeah. Mercy. God giving me what I do deserve. Or God not giving me what I do deserve. Deserve. Spare me. Because David lets us know, even in the Psalms, that God has a mercy that's abundant forever. It's abundant. And I talked about this, I think, last week in dealing with the conduct. Just because it's abundant, don't put God to the test because he has a lot of it. God, I'm going to do it anyway. And some, some people live like that. I'm going to do what I want to do because I know I, I can always lean on the grace of Jesus Christ. Until he lets it hit your front doorstep. You're like, man, I shouldn't be able to do that now. He's still going to love you. He'll still forgive you. You can still repent. Ask him to change your mind and renew your heart and be delivered. But you, you know, it's like, it's like saying, you know, I sleep with somebody unprotected, unsaved, and I, and I contract HIV. And I get saved after contracting HIV, which now becomes full-blown AIDS. Well, you saved and feel, but you're still going to die from, from AIDS. You follow me? Okay, that's that. See, we don't understand, and, and and Paul teaches this even in the Romans. He says that the wages of sin, Romans six twenty three, that the wages of sin is death. It comes with a cost to live. These things that Peter's telling us to lay aside come with a cost. Tell your children out there that are doing the things they ain't supposed to be doing. They come with a cost. 
So don't, don't, when you coming to me, calling me, and my wife, at crazy hours of the night, and you, you booing and, and hoo bobbling in tears. I, I told you, I forewarned you that this was coming. So now you have to reap the harvest based on the decision that's in your heart. But the good news is, God is still, He can still save you. He can still redeem you. He can still justify you. But you're going to pay for what you did. And say, well, I ain't never paid for what I did. What is coming? You might not pay even on this earth, but that's a day. I'm telling you, Amen. read your scriptures. Mm. You're going you to pay. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Verse 11. Got a little bit. Not much, though. Verse 11. Beloved. I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims to do what? Things. Underline that word. And I wish that the public school system would teach more of this. Abstain, yeah. They just say, man, wrap it up. You'll be all right. You're going to do it anyway. At least protect yourself. How about we just teach abstinence? Mm -hmm. How about you keep that little thing in your pants until you get a ring on it? Why? Because not because what I say as a, as a professor or a teacher, it's because what my, my, my God teaches. All right? But that's not what, uh, that's not Kim, what Kim Kardashian following keeping up with Kardashians ain't what they teaching. Kim's got like four baby daddies and 29 boyfriends and they're all superstars. All right? Everybody wants to keep up with everybody else's life because this is the image that Satan is painting. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough the way God created you. So let's rely on plastic surgery and the imagery of the world instead of relying on God's word and being thankful for who you are and what you have. Mm -hmm. That's why God's word and the world will always be in constant conflict. Why? Because God will never compromise his holiness to accommodate the sins of people. I'm going to say that one more time. Jesus Christ will never compromise his holiness to accommodate the sins of people. Ever. He will not do it. So again, Peter is talking about abstinence, abstaining, abstaining, abstaining. <clears throat> Another deliberate action. Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, when he teaches about striving for the crown, he says that I bring my body into subjection. I buffet it. Why? Because I don't want to be an apostle that teaches people the word of God and end up showing up before God on the day of judgment and end up being a reject or a castaway. I heard a brother say one time, man, there'll be a lot of preachers in hell. I want to teach a thing and then live something different. Say a thing and live different. These things, are, these, 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 what he's the fleshly lust. Who do they belong to? Go to, uh, go to First John chapter two. We're gonna see what it says. The first epistle of John, right toward the end. Three epistles, Jude and Revelation. Go to 1 John, the second chapter. I believe it's the, start off, the 15th verse. And I think the actual verse I'm looking for is 16. It start at 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. Okay. Do not love what? The world. Okay. Or what? Anything in it. Anything in it. Keep going. If anyone loves the world... Love for the Father is not in them. Okay. God said, look, <laughs> you choose. Your choice. But you can't have us both. Like adultery. Okay, and Scott, I think your wife would have a problem if you brought another woman home. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's even in the scripture. You see multiple times, a couple times at least. That we were called an adulterous generation. Cheat on God. God says, you love the world, you can't, you can't love me. Keep going. We're going to see why. These are tough words for a lot of people. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. Thank you, sir. That's what I was looking for. 
for the lust of the flesh, what, what Peter's talking about, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. John teaches that these three things are of the world and not of who? Jesus Christ. <coughs> so because they are, you and I, only through the leading of the Holy Spirit, which gives us the power to have the ability to abstain from these things. That's why, again, Peter, James, Paul, John, they all talk about abstaining, laying aside, putting things away. Why? Because it puts us in a way with God. All right? And I know every man in here tonight wants to be considered a son of God. It is. I want to, we ain't got much time tonight. Amen. But that's why, going back to yes, the sir. first part of this verse, yes, sir. he says, I urge you to do what? What is he urging us to do? What, what, what's the words he calls it? Stage. What's he the category that he? He's he, he, about? he says two. Th he he calls us by two names. Okay, who are they? Right. Hmm. What's a sojourner? The one who travels and even outside his zone, man. Okay, but he has no possession to a certain land. Right. He travels. He's an exile. He has no. He, he's not, you know, so go back to, go back to um, Jesus' priestly prayer in John 17. That's right. He says, I, you, you know, I am not of this world and you are not of this Neither world. Are you. So you know, you, the, the key piece about how you know, taking hold of the world, if we're sojourners and exiles from the world, then why do we want to hold on to the world? When you're just passing through. And we say world, Marty, elaborate because mm -hmm. we, we, the world. What is world? Well, yeah, John. Just our possessions, our worldly influence. The age or the culture. The age or the culture is, yeah. So I'm it's not, it's just not the planet. It's, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, you know, do not conform, but be transformed. Mm -hmm. Romans you know, going back to Romans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not being conformed by the, the pressures around the world because. Who, you know, right. Jesus defeated <coughs> Satan, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. But Satan still is a deceiver. Yeah. yeah. So while we have freedom, as, as, Paul, as um, Peter's going to get down here and talk about, you know, prior to next week when we get, when we, get we, we have this freedom, and Paul's talked about the freedom that we have. It's not the freedom to sin, but we're not free to, we're, we are not bonds to this world anymore. Yeah, bad. We're, we, we're just, we're passing on. Yeah. We have we have something to look forward to. Amen. That's going to be our, you know, not soldiers. We're not going to be exiles. To we are a nation. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I love this because I mean I, I mean just think about it. It's because I mean go back to go to Revelation chapter seven. I'm sorry. Go back to Revelation chapter apologize. seven. Revelation chapter seven. You ever get a chance for it? Because he's John is sitting there and he's seeing heaven, and when he sees, he sees a myriads upon myriads of believers. From every nation, tribe, and tongue. That's right. So now, wait a minute. You how do you know that? Well, one, they looked different. They had different colors. Mm -hmm. Two, they were all talking, and they were talking different languages. Mm -hmm. And yet he sees this, this massive, mm -hmm. this <coughs> mass. They're one nation. One nation. Under God. They are a real, a, a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. You know, and th th these are key words. I mean, it's, so I mean, it's it, we, we, you know, yes, as we talked about when we were studying Ephesians about mm -hmm. the offices of the church and stuff like that. But guess what? We're all a minister of God. That's it, sir. You know, if, if you want to baptize somebody, you can baptize. You don't have to go to a pastor mm -hmm. for somebody to be for that person to get baptized. If you want to baptize somebody? You can baptize them. If you want to have communion in your small group, you can have communion in small group. You don't need a pastor. Right. But see, the world says, oh, there's the ordained, mm -hmm. and then there's the laity. Mm -hmm. And that's a total lie from God. Mm -hmm. Not from God, but... That's Excuse me. I'm, that's I'm, I'm, don't say it. Don't say it. That's a total lie. That's a total lie. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's it's not, please it's forgive me. But, uh, but no, that's a total lie from Satan. Because we feel like, oh, well... You know, he's ordained. You know, or he's mm -hmm. an elder, or he's yeah. what, a deacon, yeah, or whatever. Dead, really. And all of a sudden, we became, we put these barriers. And then we can't serve what God has called us to be as a royal priesthood. That's right. 
We can't we can't be a holy nation anymore because all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, we got these barriers, and and that's what the world wants to do is put barriers in our lives yeah. to prevent us from doing what God has really called us to do. Mm -hmm. Driving a wedge. I can remember that a lot of you, some of you are older than me, right? But even in my day, <laughs> some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some, I call my <laughs> I remember standing, having this. We stand up and we say the Pledge of Allegiance before we started the school day. That's our last. That was in the eighties. What? In the, 80s. In the, 80s. the whole school. I went to. I thought they just dropped prayer. No, 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 no. We, we, we did. Yeah, I made the sin. I was saying. I was myself. It was prayer and then the. Oh yeah, we did Pledge of Allegiance. One nation under God. And it is a liberty and justice for all. I remember. Elementary school. And, yeah. and there was no hat yeah. allowed. And then I, I, did, I, did, I, did, I, did you not say the Pledge of Allegiance when you were in school? We did for a little while. It stopped while I was in school. What, wow. what, what was it? When was that? Mm, probably middle school. Probably. Yeah, see? Well, you were born in what year? High school. 83. Yeah, yeah. Same. It's, no wonder, it's no wonder you hear people talking when. <laughs> People sing the national anthem. Yeah. Hear young people just being so disrespectful. That's, that's what's being true. true. That's, that's the world. That's, that's, that's the temperature. That's the that. culture. You didn't know that? I didn't know this. They don't even have. Yeah. They don't have. That's my time. Time. They don't have I think it's the principles of discretion. Pardon me? Not only do they take them out, they're moving the flag. It's a discretion now. Yeah. Because it's offending the different culture. My daughter got in trouble in California for saying Jesus and talking about him in California. And she was in, what she did? In school? She, yeah. Because she said Jesus? Yeah. Him. It was her and reported. I think Wait, I got one better than that. Three years ago, I was in the Boy Scouts up here, running the boy, one of the largest groups. And they, they came to me because I prayed with them. And I prayed with the kids. And they said, Mr. Hartley, you know, we've got a new rule. You can pray, but mm -hmm. you can't use Jesus' name. You have you to use a generic... I left them. That's why I'm not with the Boy Scouts anymore. Man, I'm here to tell you, I played ball all through Optimus High School and college, and we prayed. Mm -hmm. We prayed before every game as yeah, a team. Man. Yeah. And even though I didn't go to public public school until I moved to St. Louis, but we still prayed when we played ball. We didn't pray in the classroom, man. No, no, you go still no, over y'all, y'all. Yeah, 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 amen. Yeah, we yeah. prayed, man. Black, white, yellow, didn't matter. Purple, no, no it didn't matter. They they told me plain but they said you can say God because mm -hmm. God is generic to all the gods. Wow. But you can't get specific. That answered my question. I was about to say, well, why is it so difficult? And I'm one of those people. But when you're young to not move towards the worldly things. It's, and it's just harder now with kids and the internet too. I mean I'm just saying Amen. But, but, but they're exposed to. I've had a few change command ceremonies and things like that. They would, you know, I was a guy that would be, would, would open up the ceremony, but I was good enough to pray at company level barbecues when dignitaries weren't there, but dignitaries were there. I actually went up and praying. I mean, to me, ain't an automatic, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, 7-Eleven, church, mm -hmm. and I, and that brother had a piece of paper up there, and I was like, hey, man, I got to talk to you, dog. I can't do that. Excuse me? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I can't. I, I man, I'm sitting up here talking about, Lord, bless us. I can't read his writing. Yeah. This day? No, nah, man, I, I can't. Look. And, and the military, and the, the proselytizing, and it's, it's bad. It's bad. But, yeah. Uh, to get to kind of get off of that, that's that's an idea of, of, of where we're going. And I okay. Walk, okay. before you get off that, yeah. And I want us to do. I dwell on the word, the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And this, I've had several people that and Terry opened it up weeks ago with something that's blessed me my whole life. I was taught to fast, and what fast? A lot of people don't realize what fasting does. Man, your body will manipulate you and try to trick you to eat. You don't realize how much you don't really have to have that it just wants. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget some of the teens. I told them, I said, well, okay, for three days, don't drink any soft drinks. Man, you would have kids crying. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I gotta have them. It, it, it's here. Mm -hmm. It's here. 
and, and you don't realize how much your flesh, mm -hmm. which is not of God, messes with this right here. And that's yeah. what Peter was revealing here. Your flesh don't tell you what to do. The Spirit of God Amen. is what's going to tell you what you need and what not to do. Look at the scripture here. Not only, we're still in verse 11, are you abstaining from fleshly lusts, but the reason you are is because they're warned against your what? Soul. Your soul. Not your spirit, not your mind, not your heart, but your soul. Which means those lusts, if they're not captivated and brought under the subjection of the obedience of Jesus Christ, it will affect your eternity. Because your soul, if you read the scriptures, is what goes on to be with God. See, people, I mean, people are wanting salvation that's not hard. Fasting is hard. Yeah. A sacrifice, the word sacrifice means mm. you have to get, it's got to hurt. If it don't hurt, it ain't a sacrifice. That's it. It's just a gift. Yeah. Right. And that's what everybody wants. Oh, I want an easy salvation. I want an easy, you know. It, <laughs> I did not, this ain't for you. You might want to go somewhere else, you know? Yeah, well. I'm sorry. Now you're good. We're done. We're three minutes after. <clears throat> but amen. We thank God uh, for tonight. And we'll pick up right where we left off. I want to be obedient to the time. Are there, are there any uh, any questions on, on what we studied tonight?